I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy, playing on the seashore and diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary, whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Sir Isaac Newton was a physicist. He shared with other physicists an innate curiosity about how things work, a fascination with how the physical universe behaves the way it does. Presumably you too share this curiosity and fascination and are about to embark on the final stage in your formal education as a physicist, graduate school. My name is Michael Paisley. I'm a solid state experimentalist. The purpose of this presentation is to show you what my colleagues and I in the Department of Physics at North Carolina State University have to offer. We think that you'll find that we have a broad array of exciting research opportunities and at the same time offer a solid curriculum in classical and modern physics. Now I can't very well show you what we have to offer here on the outer banks of the North Carolina coast. We'll have to go about 200 kilometers. campus of NC State. North Carolina State University is one of the nation's major universities, large, complex, national and international in scope. Our physics department has a faculty of 35 and a graduate student enrollment of 70. We're located here, near the center of the NC State campus, which is the academic home to nearly 25,000 students. Now most of the research done by NC State physicists is done here. And it encompasses a broad range of disciplines, including atomic physics. Now, in this laboratory, we have to go past a few safety interlocks to find a Cockroft-Walton accelerator that's used in this atomic collisions laboratory. The ions created in this accelerator shoot out through this hole in the wall and into a target chamber where an optical sensing device is used to determine the charge state of the species that's actually created in the collision itself. Let's see. provides a description of an atom an instant after it's created in a charge transfer process. It provides a picture, if you will, of the creation of an atom. Accelerators provide the backbone of a number of experiments that NC State physicists are interested in. And these range in size from the room-filling Cockcroft-Walton that initiates these collisions to the continuous electron beam accelerator facility, or CBAC. Now, the path of the electrons at CBAC will be long. Longer than six football fields. When it's completed, CBAC will be an electron accelerator built like a racetrack over 600 meters long. And it'll be located just across the Virginia state line. Some of the physicists deeply involved with the experimental results that will be coming from CBAF are theorists like Steve Cotan. 
Our theoretical high energy nuclear program is investigating the production of strange quarks using high energy electrons, which will be provided by CBAF after it's constructed. We study fields, not football fields, but actually nuclear force fields, using a theory called quantum chromodynamics. And we perform large scale calculations describing the production of quarks when electrons interact with protons. Our predictions, when compared to future CBAF experiments, will answer a number of important questions, including the possible existence of an exotic six-quark object called a dibaryon. The smoking gun signature involves detecting a kaon, which is a meson containing the strange quark. Experimentally, this will require a gigantic target chamber room, about half the size of this football field, housing enormous spectrometers, which are actually large magnets. These magnets are so long, from about 10 to 30 yards, that only about 20% of the produced kaons statistically survive to reach the end of the spectrometer. That's because the kaon's lifetime is so short that even moving near the speed of light, it only travels about four yards before decaying. That's about from here to here. Other NC State physicists are working on accelerators that are already producing beams, like this one at the Triangle University Nuclear Lab, or Tunnel. Here, nuclear experimentalists like Chris Gould study the nature of time itself. They ask whether for microscopic events, there's a difference between time running forward and time running backward. Now in their studies, they use a deuteron beam, which comes down this pipe and into a deuterium gas cell. Polarized neutrons are produced, which pass through the holmium crystal. The neutrons are counted in the neutron detector located over there. The holmium crystal is cooled to 100 millikelvin by a dilution refrigerator. We test for time reversal invariance by rotating the angle of this holmium sample. The rotation is achieved by a stepping motor located at the top of the cryostat. The polarized beam used in this experiment comes from this tandem Van de Graaff, which was designed and patented by an NC State physicist. Now, all of the accelerators used by our faculty aren't in North Carolina. Consider, for example, this synchrotron at Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York. In this facility, it's the X-ray and ultraviolet radiation produced by the beam that are the reason for the existence of the accelerator. This is the National Synchrotron Light Source. NC State students here work with Professor Dale Sayers. This facility is a synchrotron dedicated to the use of electromagnetic radiation, called synchrotron radiation, that emerges when the relativistic electrons undergo acceleration. The radiation is an intense, nearly white source of X-rays. We use the X-rays in a technique we developed called Extended X-ray Absorption Fine Structure, or XAFs. With XAFs, we probe the local atomic structure of materials such as semiconductors, glasses, catalysts, and biological materials. The information we obtain, the raw data, is complicated. It requires considerable analysis to show how subtle features in an X-ray absorption spectrum can be used to unlock secrets about atomic structure. Most of the data analysis involved with this experiment takes place back on the NC State campus when the data taking part of the experiment is complete. But before we continue with our campus facility, let's look at one more synchrotron. In Gaithersburg, Maryland, this synchrotron is used by a team of NC State atomic physicists in an electron impact photoemission experiment. John Risley and his colleagues study how an electron goes through an atom or a molecule. When an electron passes through an atom, it gives off light in the extreme ultraviolet region. We measure this light using this apparatus over here. In fact, this apparatus was designed and built by graduate students at North Carolina State University. Every few months, 
we bring this machine here to the National Bureau of Standards in Maryland to calibrate the sensitivity of the detector at different wavelengths using synchrotron radiation. The radiation enters the spectrometer from this beam line. Since it is a very narrow ray, we have to rock our spectrometer about the entrance slit to fully illuminate its grating. This rocking is crucial to our calibration procedure. We use it to calculate the electron impact for emission cross sections and thereby gain a better understanding of the excitation of atoms and molecules. Down here, you can see how this experiment makes its way from Maryland back home to North Carolina. It's an experiment on wheels that spends most of its life here on the NC State campus. All of these experiments involve accelerators and all generate an enormous amount of data, which has to be analyzed, usually on a computer. Students here are connected to a network of computers and address a variety of problems, ranging from XFs to supernova remnants, exploding stars. This is Steve Reynolds, a theoretical astrophysicist, who makes these pretty pictures. We do radio observations using the National Radio Astronomy Observatory's very large array, a radio telescope in New Mexico. After a great deal of computer processing, we make images like this one, a radio picture of the remnant of the supernova of 1006 AD, the brightest ever observed from Earth. What you see represents synchrotron radiation from relativistic electrons and magnetic field produced somehow by the blast wave. We make mathematical models of the non-thermal population of electrons and predict what we might observe if our models are correct. This image shows the result of one calculation. By studying the differences between an image of the actual remnant and our model, we can better understand the nature of electron acceleration in these fast shock waves. Thanks a lot, Steve. You know, to me, one of the fascinating aspects of being part of the research program here at State is that in, in one lab, some of my colleagues are studying supernova remnants. Now, these are objects so incredibly vast, one can hardly conceive of them. Well, just around the corner, others are depositing microscopic specimens, atom by atom. This is the solid state physics lab of Jan Skatsina. Here, samples are prepared using a technique that's called molecular beam epitaxy, or MBE. Using MBE, one has control in one dimension, that of depth, of the atomic structure of the sample. Now, this ability is sometimes referred to as atomic architecture. When one is an atomic architect, one has to be very careful about cleanliness. Because on an atomic scale, it doesn't take very much dirt to contaminate a sample. This particular MBE system was designed and built by NC State physicists. uses a laser to assist in the production of a structure called a super lattice. Now the laser comes from an adjacent laboratory where it can also be used as a tool to analyze samples after they're made. For instance, when used in a pulse mode, one can study the response of samples to light first of 10 to the minus 12 seconds. That's a picosecond. This reveals information about the electronic structure of the samples. And over here, in this cryostat, the sample can be cooled and then illuminated to determine the luminescence and therefore the defect structure in the sample itself. In all of these studies, from the preparation of super lattices to the, the study of time reversal invariance, from the theory of kaon decay to probing supernova remnants. Understanding is the goal, and curiosity 
is the driving force. Now, we haven't talked about all the research programs here at NC State, not by a long shot. Others deal with as basic a topic as general relativity and field theory. Some develop materials that could be used in solid state lasers for communications applications. Research in our department spans these extremes and includes quite a number of programs in between. To show you a more complete picture of the research opportunities we have for graduate students, we offer you this brochure, Graduate Physics at North Carolina State University. Now in it, we discuss each one of our research programs in turn, grouping them under such general categories as atmospheric physics and astrophysics. Atomic physics. Educational physics. Nuclear physics. Plasma physics. Relativity, field theory, and theoretical mechanics. And solid state and condensed matter physics. And if the brochure doesn't answer some of your questions about our research programs, please feel free to call any of the professors whose research programs are described. Or better yet, schedule a visit. Of course, we realize that other considerations come into play in choosing a graduate physics program. We thought you might like to see what it's like to be a graduate student here. We offer a master's and a PhD. For the MS, in addition to course and research requirements, an oral examination before a committee of three professors has to be presented in defense of the thesis. A large majority of our master's students complete their degree in two years. The PhD program has no language requirement and no formal course requirements, but by the time one considers the effect of the department's qualifying examination, the graduate school requirements, and departmental policies, a core curriculum is fairly closely defined. Perhaps the most important requirement for a PhD is the successful completion of the qualifying exam. Most students take this exam at the end of their second year in the program. The graduate school at NC State gets into the picture with a minor requirement of four courses, which are usually taken after the qualifying exam is successfully passed. The final requirement is the defense of a thesis before a committee of four professors. Research leading to a thesis generally takes two to three years after the passing of the qualifier. So, a typical program takes four to five years. But all these facts and figures can't tell you what life like a graduate student is like. And to do that, we have to go to the source. This is Brian Davidson, an NC State student from Massachusetts, who's working on his PhD. Hi. I've been a graduate student here for three years, and I'm currently working on my doctorate thesis. My first year at NC State, I was a teaching assistant, and that's a department requirement. But now, I'm a solid state theorist working with Jerry Lakowski. This is my roommate, David Sue. When I first came to North Carolina State, I was on a fellowship from the Microelectronics Center of North Carolina. Our physics department offers a few scholarships, and all those who come here should check into those. Brian and I both have cars. They're really necessary to get around the Raleigh and the Research Triangle area. They're also great to have for visiting the beach and the mountains, which are a few hours drive in each direction, east and west of here. As far as the weather is concerned, I'm from Seattle, and I find that the change in weather is, is very large. On the other hand, what I like about Raleigh is the summers are nice and warm, and the fall time and the spring times are extremely enjoyable. Once in a while, in the wintertime, it does snow, and I love to get out my skis and run around the hills. Both David and I have received excellent training here at the Department of Physics at NC State. Coming to NC State was the right choice for both of us. It may be worth checking to see if it's the right choice for you. 
Now that we're almost completed with our program, let me show you that our department has only just begun. The campus that's been the heart of the NC State community for a hundred years has recently doubled in size and the plans for the new campus are as ambitious and exciting as the research I've already shown you. The first building on the Centennial campus is already completed and in it physicists are embarking on a new program. They're studying the physics of the material removal process. Here micro Raman spectroscopy is employed to determine the stress of surfaces like germanium that are machined here on a single point diamond turning machine. Raman spectroscopy is an optical probe of atomic structure. By focusing to as small a spot as they can, that is to the diffraction limit of light using an argon laser, NC State physicists can actually map a stress profile inside a single groove of this machine surface. A surface that, as far as the eye can tell, is perfectly smooth or optically flat. Microscopic pictures of these surfaces show that on the atomic scale, the surface is not flat. These pictures of a machine surface, by the way, are made with a scanning tunneling microscope. The first of these small and deceptively simple devices won a Nobel Prize for two industrial physicists. With this model, built here, we were able to look at machine surfaces with atomic scale resolution. This new campus is a sign of vitality and a future even more promising than our past. Future generations of graduate students will do their research in buildings yet to be built. We invite you to take a good hard look at our research programs to see if you want to study something like time reversal invariance or electron impact photo emission or supernova remnants or any of the other fields investigated by physicists in our department. And now, we've come full circle, both geographically and conceptually. We've shown you a variety of ways you can satisfy your curiosity, while at the same time becoming a productive and inventive physicist. For as physicists, we all are, as Isaac Newton suggested, like children, fascinated with how things work.